Marilyn might have been his most public affair, but JFK had a habit of sneaking around, and one very special connection to the Chicago mob. According to her best-selling 2013 memoir, Once Upon a Secret, White House intern Mimi Alford was only 19 when the 45-year-old president pursued her. Alford came from an upper-crust East Coast background and got the position through her connection with the affluent Bouvier family. She met the president and his best friend, Dave Powers, by the White House pool during her first week on the job. Her boss immediately took a liking to her. In her memoir, Alford wrote, he just couldn't resist a girl with a little bit of social register in her. The president then invited her back to his suite for a drink. What followed was a year-and-a-half-long affair. Alfred claims she even lost her virginity to JFK, writing, "...blinded by the president's power and charisma, I was fully committed to keeping our affair secret." You never even referred to him as Jack. He was always Mr. No. President. And always Mr. President. She alleges that the president introduced her to drugs, asked her to perform sexual favors for his friend, Dave Powers, and continued to pursue her after her engagement and up until his assassination in 1963. It took 50 years for Alfred to work up the courage to tell her story. She sums up the affair in her memoir, writing, I can't say our relationship was romantic. It was sexual, it was intimate, it was passionate. During the Kennedy presidency, White House secretaries Priscilla Ware and Jill Cowan were given the codenames Fiddle and Faddle by the Secret Service due to their regular involvement with the president. According to accounts from various co-workers, they'd skinny dip in the pool with JFK when he wasn't busy figuring out how to deal with the Cold War, of course. Much effort was put in to ensure First Lady Jackie Kennedy was none the wiser. Teams would come to clean up after JFK and his various mistresses, picking up anything incriminating before Jackie returned from her travels. But Mrs. Kennedy wasn't fooled. Rumor has it that, while giving a French reporter a tour of the White House, the First Lady passed by Priscilla Ware's typing station and said, in French, of course, "...and there is the woman that my husband is supposed to be sleeping with." According to Forbes, Kennedy also had a relationship with Pamela Turnour, Jackie's personal secretary, although Turnour's family insists there's no truth to those claims. In her 1977 memoir, My Story, Judith Exner alleged that she had a two-year affair with John F. Kennedy. Exner, who was married to actor William Campbell in the early 50s, was friendly with several Hollywood A-listers. After her divorce, she began a casual relationship with Frank Sinatra, who introduced her to JFK in 1960. Thanks to Sinatra, she also got to know Chicago mob boss Sam Giancana. Contrary to what she told the Senate under oath in 1975, Exner served as a link between the boss of the Chicago Crime Syndicate and the president. In a 1988 interview with People, Exner confessed, I lied when I said I was not a conduit between President Kennedy and the Mafia. I lied when I said that President Kennedy was unaware of my friendships with mobsters. He knew everything about my dealings with Sam Giancana and Johnny Roselli because I was seeing them for him." The Mafia's skill at exploiting human weaknesses gave them an opportunity to snare the future President of the United States. According to Exner, she would pass messages between the two parties, and JFK allegedly asked Giancana for support on the campaign trail. In defense of her actions, Exner asked Vanity Fair, I was 26 and in love. Was I supposed to have more judgment than the President of the United States? In 1962, Exner was pregnant with Kennedy's child, and he, along with Giancana, helped arrange an abortion, which was illegal at the time. In 1962, Hollywood icon Marlena Dietrich, then over 60, slept with JFK while performing at the White House. As her longtime friend Gore Vidal recounted years later, the actor responded to the president's proposition with, you know, Mr. President, I am not very young. A relatively brief encounter followed, after which JFK asked, Did you ever go to bed with my old man? 
Dietrich had most definitely been involved with Joe Kennedy, JFK's playboy father, over two decades before, but she lied and said she hadn't. While Dietrich may be one of the most legendary women JFK bedded, East German model Ellen Rometsch may have been the most dangerous. Rometsch met Kennedy while working as a hostess at a private hideaway called the Quorum Club, but her real job was allegedly spying for East Germany. According to Washington insider Robert Jean Baker, she looked like Elizabeth Taylor and sparked the interest of many men. Baker recalled the conversation with lobbyist Bill Thompson that started it all. Thompson asked him, you think if I invited her to my apartment, she'll go to the White House and see President Kennedy? Baker was sure she would, and in fact, Rometsch went to the White House several times. Where sex was concerned, John F. Kennedy thought he was untouchable, invulnerable. JFK's brother, Attorney General Robert Kennedy, eventually deported Romanch back to Germany. He was worried the relationship would be discovered, which would have been a disaster in light of the FBI's investigation into her communist ties. Mary Pinchot Meyer's relationship with JFK, like Marilyn Monroe's, ends in tragedy. Meyer ranked high on the social ladder. She grew up wealthy, attended New York's best schools, where she first met the president-to-be, and married a CIA official. In the mid-50s, years before JFK became president, the Myers and the Kennedys lived next door to one another in Washington, D.C., and she and Jackie Kennedy became friends. After her divorce in 1958, Meyer began an affair with JFK. They had a years-long relationship, allegedly experimenting with psychedelics and discussing top-secret politics. We went through the White House gate logs from this period to see her being signed in on at least 15 occasions, always around dinner time. In 1964, the year after JFK's assassination, Meyer was murdered. Despite an overwhelming lack of evidence, a young black day laborer named Ray Crump Jr. was arrested for the crime, but was eventually acquitted. Speaking about Crump, author Leo Damore theorized, he was the perfect patsy, better even than Lee Harvey Oswald. Mary Meyer was killed by a well-trained professional hitman, very likely somebody connected to the CIA. Meyer's murder remains one of Washington's biggest unsolved mysteries.